The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 4th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Drop that off at steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got a sea of red out there. All the U.S. indices trading the downside. All the sectors in the S&P 500 trading the downside. It goes like this. The Dow's off 303. S&P down 24. NASDAQ 23. Russell 24. Semis 33. Trannies down 194. The uh, leader percentage-wise to the downside is the uh, Trannies at 193 points to the downside. You've got the spot politics above its 50-day exponents moving average. That is a bonus for the sellers out there. Uh, you've got gold up, trading out at 2057, but it's trading into resistance. We're going to take a look at that during the show. Silver at 2603. Light sweet crude is down two pennies at 6856. Natural gas threatening to bust through its Rosemont indicator bottom. It's off seven cents right now. And the 30 year treasury is up 20 ticks, 132.16 is the print there. Leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside. You've got HubSpot up 35 bucks, nearly 9% move. Equinix, 31 bucks, 4%. Solar Edge, 10% move, 26 bucks. Martin Marietta, 6.5%. 23. To the downside, it's Regenerant Pharmaceuticals off 5%, 41 bucks. Booking Holdings, $30. United Rentals down 20, about a 6% move there. Westco International, 12% or 18 bucks. Teleflex down 17 bucks. That's a 6.5% move to the downside as well. But let's begin by taking a look at what do we want to take a look at? Let's um, let's come over here, take a look at the uh, equity futures. First of all, we'll start off like this. I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to waste the time. Uh, but I can tell you the TAS market breadth for the weekly, daily, 240, 60, and 30 minute for the S&P and for the NASDAQ 100 are each are all bearish at this stage of the game. So we've got bearish crossovers. Now, when I take a look at the ES mini, what I've drawn in here is the potential for a consolidation pattern. That's what it appears to me to be trading at. Now, that doesn't mean that price can't back, get, get back to 40.2275. And that is a price target for sure because price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. This would be day number two. So from a profile standpoint, the next target would be down at that uh, 40.22 level. Uh, but uh, right now, I'm going to have to go with the consolidation. We have a consolidation inside the NQ. We can draw it larger than what we have. But right now, price is just consolidating with inside that bullish structured profile. So it needs a close blow, 12914, to suggest to you or I that there's a change in trend in the market. In the case of the Dow Equity Future Contract, the Dow Equity Future Contract, I'm struggling right now to figure out the pattern to draw in here. What I do know is that price has made its way back to a level of potential support. So that's easy. That level of potential support is at 33228. That is the bottom of its weekly profile. Now, it's not so 
important as to where it's trading at 11.10 on Thursday afternoon or Thursday morning. Uh, it really matters where does this close tomorrow. So we won't know until we're back together on Monday uh, whether or not this level of support is held. But you want to jot down on your pad of paper that 33.228 level. And then finally, when we take a look at the Russell 2000, it's trading inside its swing point. This is the swing point that generated the Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. It's also a bullish hammer candle. And so price is likely going to go tag or target that 12, uh, I'm sorry, 17, what do I have it at? 1703. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, at this stage here, that's what it, uh, that's what I see. If we take a look at the index ETFs, just kind of get some volume out here, just as a similar, so the same swing point did volume of about uh, 47 million, a little over 47 million shares. You're 20 million. You're 20 million, so you're pushing into that with volume. So that says, because you're 20 million in less than two hours of trading, so that says if we get back to the equity futures, we're likely going to see a tag of that 1703 level. So, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. So that's what we have when we take a look at the daily time frames. We can switch over here real quickly and take a look at the weekly time frames. So on the weekly time frames, the ES Mini does have a new weekly profile that is formed. So that 4022 level that we looked at, that's a real key level there. Because if price gets below that, that's going to suggest an intermediate term change in trend inside of the ES Mini. The NQ, boy, it needs to close below 12,886 in order to suggest to you and I that price is going to start really moving to the downside. That's the center of its bearish structured profile, which so far was tested last week and held as support. The Dow, um, the Dow Equity Future guy said 32, it's 31,995. Do I have two different profiles? Hold on a second, because I'm using a, let me see here. Let me just see, let me check. Uh, I do. So this set of profiles that we're looking at lower left, if you take a look, this is just looking at the June contract. So it's, and I use both. So this is the first set of profiles, first level of support. Now when you change over to this other weekly chart that I've got out here, you'll can see you can see that I've used my synthetic version to stitch together the uh, futures contracts in a better way to provide us with other profile information. So what we do know is that if price closes below the daily that we've got out there at the uh, 33228 33, area, then the next areas would be 32903 in 31,955. So that's under Dow Equity Future contract. Inside the uh, Russell, price has just gotten back to a, a trend line out there. As we pull this up here, you can see the trend line that we're uh, using out here. So it is back near an area of support. What do we want to look at next? You know, uh, what do we want to look at next? Let's do this here. So the, so we're, we're taking like a potential potential change in trend. We at least know the levels to be watching at. And that's really important as we change over. We've taken a look at this chart. I think maybe we did it on Tuesday uh, or the beginning of the week out here. But this is the chart that takes a look at on a daily level, daily, weekly, and monthly. Just the four cash indices, the Dow, the S&P, the uh, NASDAQ, and the uh, – this is not right – that is not what Stevie meant to put up. Okay, do I have that? I do. It's just got to grab the right tab. So now we're looking at the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000. So the concern here is that we may be headed into a two-month correction. And the way that we come upon that uh, conclusion here is if we take a look at, for example, I'll just take a look at the S&P right now. If we take a look at the S&P, we had a two-consecutive-month move out there. That is your typical unless we're just in an outrageously bull market, which we are not at the moment. There's no way that we can say that, or I'm not going to say that. So at this stage of the uh, game out here, it's logical to either have a one-month or a two-month pullback. Well, right now, what price is threatening to do is get below last month's low out there. So last month's low on the S&P cash is 40, 49, 35. We get below that, we stay below that, we're likely signaling a two-month pullback inside of the markets. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, 
dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals. What is behind the Tiger Forex Report? For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. Let's get to some requests. We've got quite a few that have come in, so thanks for all of those. Much appreciated. Alton is going to start us off. He wants to take a look at Occidental Petroleum. Question goes like this. If you have time, please look at it. We're going to. I'm in your camp thinking that we will need fossil fuels for the foreseeable future. And so I'm looking to start a position, Oxy, concerning the volatility in energy space. Uh, so let's take a look at it, see if we can find any kind of bottom pattern. And I don't see anything at the moment, so keep that powder dry. What we have in a daily time frame is price below a bullish structured profile and a red oscillator and change line no bottom signal price looks to be targeting its swing point out here it hasn't gotten there that's a swing point for march 15th now the volume on that swing was 30 million shares so if the high gets hit 58.35 and price closes back above it with less than 30 million shares that'd be a test and rejection of a swing point you've got on a weekly basis price sitting at support and support is the bottom of its bullish structured profile 58.96 we're at 58.94 or really we're right there right now um, but we need to know what Friday's close is, not today. If price closes below that, and it's trading into a swing point from back on March 17th, that did 110 million shares so far this week, we've done 35. So you are pointing back into the weekly swing with lighter volume out there. So that's a positive for it. On a monthly time frame, if price closes below that weekly profile level, what that's going to do is open up the door for the range of 50.05 to 54.00. Uh, 84. So I think uh, I think at this stage here, you've got some time. I don't have any signal on a daily time frame that suggests that you get in. I don't have anything on a intraday basis that suggests that you get in. So continue watching Occidental Petroleum, but uh, keep that powder dry at the uh, moment. And let's watch if uh, price does move lower, um, how it deals with that swing point and any other pattern that might form. But I don't have any p pattern at the, as we speak right now. So Alton, I hope that that helps you out. Thanks much for taking the time to write in. Seagull inside the Tiger's Den wanted to take a look at the Euro US dollar as well as Goldilocks. So let's uh, get down and take a look at the Euro. If you give me a moment here, we'll get to its multi-panel set of uh, charts. 
And we take a look at the euro. Let's just start on a monthly time frame. So as we take a look at the euro, let's open up the uh, charts out here. And uh, price has gotten above a uh, trend line here, which is a positive uh, seagull. So on a monthly basis, this is suggesting that price could continue to move higher out here. And that higher, you'd have to say, on that longer term, tr uh, longer term pattern could just simply be this trend line. Looks like it's off just a tad out there. I won't worry about that. But it looks like that trend line, I would go to your monthly chart. Uh, for the euro and I would draw that same set of trend lines in if we take a look at the weekly time frame the weekly time frame shows that last week was wave number seven or letter G now if we don't get a higher high this week that could be a topping pattern now that's courtesy of a portion a very small portion of the uh, Chapman wave out there but we are in that wave C but here's the deal we're also above a green oscillator and change line so I'd be hesitant on uh, leaning on that for a absolute uh, top out here. This is suggesting we could see higher price as well, but we will respect that wave number seven. On the daily time frame, formed a nice uh, TD9 count bottom out here, and all I see are higher lows and higher highs out here. And yes, I could draw in a, a sell the D point pattern, and we'll get another one today if we have this bear sash, but it's really been, don't you see more of a sideways consolidation type pattern than anything else out here? I mean, if we were to draw that in, it looks something like, I'm not gonna worry about being exact, uh, but it's going to look something like this, you know, give or give or take. That's a consolidation. So it's possible that what price is doing here, we take a look at the daily chart, is just simply getting back to that, that consolidation. But it's been oscillating back and forth from that oscillator and change line. So we don't have a real clear signal on the daily time frame out there. Intraday, what do we have out here? Intraday looks like price wants to move lower. So the lower area would be, the next area would be 10941 to 10976. That looks to be the next target uh, seagull on the uh, downside for the euro. So I hope that helps you out there with regard to the euro US dollar. Let's go take a look at Goldilocks for you. Let's close these charts out as they're taking up precious resources and let us move over to gold. So when we take a look at gold out here, it'll populate momentarily. In the upper left hand corner, what you're going to see is a couple of different uh, tops, potential tops out here. We just talked about wave number seven in the euro. Well, it turns out today is triggered wave number seven for gold. Now, in order to confirm a wave seven top, what gold needs is a lower high tomorrow. So we can't get that confirmation until tomorrow. What we do have is an already confirmed Rogemintum indicator top. And this is the real key level of resistance out here. And it happens to be the high from April 13th. And that high is at 20, 2063.40. If price closes above 2063.40, it will have negated the Rogemintum indicator top. It still keeps that wave number seven, which can extend itself. It can extend itself for a long period of time out there. Uh, so right now, watch that 26. I think that the more important level to watch is not the wave seven top. We'll deal with that perhaps tomorrow, but 2063.40. Price doesn't take that out. Well, then maybe that uh, uh, consolidation that you and I took a look at is really where we're at with regard to Goldilocks. On a 30 minute basis, what did price do? Ran right up into its breakdown resistance level at 2065. We had a TD9 count top on the 60 minute time frame. I've got wave number seven out here on the 120 minute time frame. Uh, so with regard to gold, uh, you got the five hour TD9 count top on the five hour time frame. I gotta tell you folks, it sure sounds to me like Coldilocks is getting ready to generate some type of short term top. And again, it could just be that consolidation, but we really need to see how the day plays out. But right now, intraday, that's really the message to us. Price got up to resistance on the daily time frame, and the intraday charts are saying, hey, we are in complete agreement with resistance being resistance. So thanks so much for the request. Let's get to our next request. That's coming from SP inside the Tiger's Den. And SP wants to take a look at LNG. So let's get to that set of charts out here. I believe that they'll Paul, there we go. So with regard to liquid natural gas, LNG, trading out at about 145.49 right now as we speak. What do we have? We have a trading with inside its TD9 count bottom candle. And that candle was from uh, the trading session of March 16th. The volume there on that candle session was 2.5 million shares. Yesterday, price pulled back with 1.7. So you're pulling back into that with light volume. But where's the bottom? Is there a bottom? I don't know. I see an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern out here, right? It looks like this. Let's draw in A to B, and it will just simply move that over to the C point. Now, you might say, Stevie, why didn't you use this? Or why didn't you use this? Number nine, where that TD9 count is. Well, because there's a, the high that I would have to then use would have to be this high here, 
okay, from the trading day, which we're going to use, uh, from May 1st out there. And so then I need to find the lowest low prior to that high. And it turns out that that is all the way over here. And so that's why you need to use that candle. It's high to low, back up to high to then you get your, then you're using your A to B equals CD, the A to B, the, the A to B leg out there, which looks like this. So here's the A to B equals CD leg, which basically says we've gotten down to about the one to one level, but you'd never buy a one to one level. You need confirmation from something, at least a 30 minute time frame chart out here. So what we have with regard to LNG is an A to B equals CD to the downside, trading with inside that swing point with lighter volume, no bottom. If you did get a bullish reversal candle, that would then trigger a buy the D point pattern. In the case of the weekly chart, the good news here, SNP is that prices found support at 143.62. And on a monthly chart, prices has found support at the center of its bullish structure profile. A close below that would suggest that LNG wants to go target 126.32 and that being 144.99. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, the LNG charts. Now you might have asked, hey, is there a potential bottom on a 30 minute chart, Stevie? Well, the answer to that question is there is. It formed a Rosemont indicator bottom with price consolidating with inside its profile. So if you get a close above 148.04, that would be a signal that it wants to move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at uh, Nugget. This is also for SNP and the Tigers Den, which is pushing into a, a swing point. That swing point from April 13th that did volume of 3.1 million shares. You are already up with 1.5 million in, in two hours of trading. So this has got volume as it pushes into that swing point. Now, what uh, Nugget already has is an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. So if I bring this back here, you can see that. You can more easily see it on the weekly time frame. That one-to-one -one A to B equals CD gets you up to 54.48. Now, on a weekly basis, when price took out that swing point, give me a second here. Let's get back here. That swing did volume there of 9 points, 9 points, make, make sure I was hovering over the right thing, 9.6 million. When it was passed a couple weeks ago, it was with 13 million. So you've got that confirmed, A to B equals CD to the upside. So that's the good news. And the one-to-one -one price projection there is about your 54.48, 1.27 is 61.48 out there. Now, good news, bad news. Uh, bad news. Uh, this is gonna this is gonna be bar number eight on a weekly basis. You also now have triggered wave number seven on a weekly basis. Again, that wave seven needs a lower high next week, but let's just be aware of it. And this says that you could get a TD9 count top that forms between this week and two weeks out. Based upon pushing into this swing point with volume, um, odds favor. It's going to go ahead and at least be able to make that one-to-one -one level, 54.48. But, you know, this is going to be reliant upon gold as well, both gold and silver, which I believe are up towards the top of their consolidation. So we just take a look at that. But overall, the Nugget, the GDX, are pushing their swing point with volume. Their preference is to take it out and complete their one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern. So SNP, I hope that helps you out. Thanks much for the request. Dan inside the Tiger's Den, he wanted to take a look at Nike. I believe he's short Nike out there. We took a look at this a couple of days ago. And the uh, so what Nike here has done, Dan. Well, let me just make sure that it's trading where it is. I know I've got just a tad of a delay. One twenty four forty eight on these white background charts that you're looking at, and uh, one twenty three sixty one on the uh, black. So one twenty three, and that's important. So the key level here inside of uh, Nike, Dan, is going to be one twenty three sixty nine, and one twenty three sixty nine is the uh, bottom of its uh, daily profile out there if price closes below that and it is trading just below that right now it doesn't show you on my chart right here my apology for that uh then the next level to be watching is 12307 that's the weekly oscillator and change line i would say if price closes below 12307 that's signaling to you and i a change in trend and then that could go ahead and take us uh, back to the uh well 11650 uh, 12004 those would be levels to be watching on a further decline out here um, this too, so it's pushing into the swing point from the trading on the daily time frame uh, that did 4.2 million shares. That was back on April the 27th. And so far today, you're at 1.9. So you're pushing uh, lower with what looks like volume out here, but has not busted through that swing. But a close below that, that would not, that also trigger for both you and I a signal that, okay, price is getting ready to head lower. So that's what I see when I take a look at Nike on the intraday basis. Well, not really on the daily time frame, just out of curiosity. This looks like uh, this could be day number three to the downside for Nike, see, Nike with regard to lower closes. So, Dano, either this is in a uh, concerted move lower or you should get some type of bounce tomorrow. Might be a one-day bounce or nearly would be like at least a two-day bounce out here. So that says watch that support level um, closely because if that level holds, again, that was that bottom of that profile, and that was at the uh, 123.69 level, then I'd say more likely yeah, that expected maybe one or two day bounce uh, would uh, come into play out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Nike, and uh, you are most uh, welcome. Chuck wanted to take a look at ticker symbol P-A-N-P-A-C-W. What was that, Pac-Man, P-A-C-W? Uh, it's probably not, uh, but I didn't put up the correct charts out there, so that's not going to help. That's not going to help Chuck out, but let's get back here. I think I might have done it. This is Pac West Bank Corp. Basically going BK. This thing was just at uh, 52 bucks just a few months ago. And right now trading at about $3 and change out there. But is there any uh, potential savior out here with regard to the stock? Well, turns out we've been talking about a lot of wave number seven signals out there. That was just in time, I guess, for Basil's workshop last night because that's what it's triggered now today is wave number seven. It has also triggered bar number eight of a TD nine count pattern. And so here, with regard to that TD nine count pattern, that says that you should get a completed pattern tomorrow and then one that, uh, I'm sorry, confirmed pattern tomorrow, one that completes on Monday. So this has got some potential based upon the daily technicals out here on the weekly and the monthly. There's nothing there. I take that back. I do see a potential. Now we're not going to go there with that wave seven pattern. 
on the uh, monthly chart out there. So not seeing a whole lot, but uh, look, it is. Uh, you do have. You could see easily see a bounce out there, knowing now what you'd really want to see is some type of bullish reversal candle. I'm not suggesting playing it at all. So check out. I don't know if that was a request or you just threw that in there, but we took it anyways. Brent in Martinez, California, he would like to take a look at Lightsweet Crude. So let's do that. Let's get over to the Lightsweet Crude charts. And uh, it's bankrupt. Yeah, it, it probably is taken over next. Uh, Brent's question goes like this. Uh, good morning, Steve. Could you please comment on the price action of crude oil futures opening yesterday afternoon in the open and plunge quickly? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's over produced a daily hammer candle. What's the potential? Was that potentially a near-term bottom? Can we look at the opening, your shortest-term time frame charts, and have a terrific day? Yeah, so, okay, so what the heck is going on with this? Oh, it's because I've got the wrong con. No. June, that's weird. There we go. We got unweird. Okay, so you'd like the shortest-term time frame. So here's what we're going to do. Steve's going to create a new chart. And then we're going to just put for the shortest term time frame. Let's go ahead and somebody get to CL0623. And then for the time frame, we're going to go to the minutes. We're going to go, let's start with a five minute chart out here. So let's do that. We'll put in 30 days worth of data. If you give me a moment, all five, make sure this is set to five. All right. So we'll have the five minute chart here populated momentarily. I've got to drag it over from another screen. And uh, we'll just take this chart. We won't worry about the oscillator and change line as much on the five minutes, correct? Uh, but here, if you're asking on a five-minute time frame, what did we see? What we saw out here was a confirmed Three River Morningstar Roadsman Indicator bottom pattern. That took place between uh, 1045 and, uh, and 11 o'clock. Let me get my cursor out here. Makes it a little bit more accurate for Stevie. So at uh, 1050 was the exact time, time frame that that pattern completed. And then, Brent, what that did was it took price right up to resistance, 68.80, the TD9 count breakdown level. Let's change this over to a 10-minute time frame. And again, don't pay attention to the oscillator and change. I don't want to go back in and change the settings. You had a TD9 count bottom. What did price do? Ran right into resistance at 68.80. So this is helpful for Brent, helpful for everybody else, helpful for us to understand what's going on. Let's take a look at a 15-minute time frame out here. The 15-minute, a TD9 count bottom, Price finding resistance at the top of its profile, 68.67. Now, there's 68.97 and 69.31 TD9 count breakdown resistance uh, uh, support. So those are the intraday. I think I might have a 30-minute if I shorten this one down. Yes, we do in the upper right-hand corner. So on the 30-minute time frame chart, what you'd be looking at for some type of uh, confirmation. So yesterday's low out there, and that moved higher. All that that really led to was a TD9 count top on a 30-minute basis, Brent. And that TD9 count top completed at uh, 5 a.m. this morning. And since then, we've seen price move lower. I don't have any kind of a pattern on it. Uh, I've got wave number uh, a C or wave number 3 out there, but no bottom signal on that uh, 30 minutes. So was it a bottom? On a daily basis, price tested that TD9 count bottom, and it also held, or so far today, it is holding the breakout support level of 67.02. But I really, I, I'd say we'll finish it up when we come back to this break. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back. We're looking at the light speed crude again. Again, I've got the five minute or the 10 minute chart up on my screen. So Brent, I, I would look at it like this. It's got the potential for a bottom, certainly intraday, very intraday. Um, and then testing and rejecting that TD9 count bottom pattern on a daily basis, rejecting a swing point altogether. But you certainly want to see a close above 68.80 and 69.20 out there. The other side is that maybe light speed crude is not done headed lower. And what I mean by that is if we take a look at the uh, this daily chart out here, we'll see that uh, yesterday was day number three. Today could be day number four of consecutive moves lower out here. But yesterday was day number three. So it's not unusual to see it try to fight and at least get a rally for a day or two out here. Um, so I would watch for that. We've seen uh, on this move down here, Brent, we've seen two two-day rallies out there. Uh, today doesn't qualify as one just yet. It's got to get above yesterday's close in order for that to unfold out there. So I hope that information helped you out. Thanks much for being out with us. Brent is out in uh, California. And, of course, we've got folks all over the place. We've got uh, Mike, who's uh, listening to us right now. I believe he is in Florence, Italy. So that is a, a beautiful thing. Let's go take a look at PayPal. Vic wanted to take a look at PayPal. So let's pull up that chart. Actually, let me close out this uh, chart here, free up some resources. And then we'll get up to those PayPal charts here momentarily. The question was really just to take a look at it. So don't know whether... Uh, this individual is in it or not in it. But we do know about PayPal. PYPL, by the way, is the uh, ticker symbol. Trading uh, right now below the bottom of its daily profile. But there is a... Um, there is a... Tr is it? Oh, i got to pull this back a bit further. Okay. So there is a trend line that it uh, has traded into. I will draw that in here for you. So I'd recommend drawing this trend line as well. From the bottom of that hammer candle back in uh, December... And then use this low out here from uh, April the uh, 26th. And so as we do that, what we will see is that yesterday was a move down into that trend line. So, yes, we are trading below profile support. Price traded into a swing point that had volume of 9 million shares. It did it yesterday with 11 million shares. Now, what price could do today is it could reject that swing point. It's not 4.4 million shares. Well, it's possible. Hmm. In order to reject the swing point, you need to have less than 11.4 million shares and a close above 74.37 out there. But there is a level of support that it did hit. If this level of support fails, Vic, then what I would suggest is that price would get back towards 68.84. And 68.84 is its oscillator and change line. The next level of support below that 
would be out at 66.39. That's the low from December. And that uh, was because that had confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom pattern. So that's what I see. We take a look at PayPal. Now you can expect a uh, about a two-day rally here. Uh, PayPal has uh, traded lower for three consecutive days. We can see a number of twos and threes out here. That's the normal uh, pattern. And so you could expect or should expect a, a two to three-day rally inside of uh, PayPal. So it looks like that support level that we looked at, that trend line support is going to hold out there. So I hope that helped you out. And then we've got a, a double out here. When I say a double, we've got the same request, this one coming in from both Hector and Mike in Florence. And that's to take a look at Apple. Apple has a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator uh, top out here. First, let me see if there was uh, Hector's question. Uh, Apple, OUL resistance and support. Also, is there an A to B, C up on a weekly basis? There is an A to B equals CD pattern on a weekly basis. The swing point or the B point of that was the uh, week of February 3rd. Volume there, 480 million shares. It was passed with 350, then 267, and then 200, and then 263. So it has not passed it with volume. And on a weekly basis, what Price has done, it's found that resistance up at that TD9 count breakdown area at 171.53. So if we can get through that, Hector, uh, then it should complete that one-to-one -one, uh, target area from the 176 level. But right now what Apple has on a daily basis, I'll just simply expand out the chart, is we have a confirmed Rosemont indicator top. Now that pattern confirmed a couple of days ago when it generated that bearish engulfing candle. That was on May the 2nd. What it did was it set up the high of that or resistance was the prior day because it was the high of the two candle session out there, 170.45. Now we have price trading below the bottom of a profile. So when it comes to Apple, its price target could be the swing point out here from April the 12th. That did 50 million shares. So far today, you've got a gap to the downside, 25 million shares. It is pushing into that area with volume. It hasn't gotten that swing point, but it does look like that's what it might be targeting. Or it's trading in this swing point that had 45 million shares. That was from April 26. And again, today you are already at 25. So it is pushing lower with volume. The weekly chart says, well, geez, this is bar number eight of a TD9 count. Could get a TD9 count top, but price would have to stop uh, making a significant move lower because next week price would have to close above bar number four. And bar number four's close on a weekly basis was 164.66. So kind of uncertain about the uh, weekly time frame. Price did close above its descending trend line uh, or channel I, as well. Uh, so that's a nice positive. But the monthly also running into resistance, the top of its profile. So here's what we know. The daily has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top with the weekly at resistance. The, uh, the monthly at resistance, top of its profile. The weekly near resistance up towards the uh, TD9 count breakdown level. And we now have a gap to the downside with volume and Apple trading below it's uh, uh, the bottom of its daily profile. So it looks to me like Apple wants to take a time out and move lower. And uh, we have a couple of different uh, price areas. We've identified those. The first one being the swing from April 26th. The next one being the swing from April 12th. So Hector and Mike, I hope that helps you out and have a uh, terrific Thursday. The next question. Uh, comes from uh, the golf guy. The golf guy wants to take a look at uh, UPRO. UPRO is a, a short position for uh, the S&P 500. So UPRO right now, uh, it is trading below profile support. Uh, it is trading below a swing point. This is the swing point from April 27th at 8 million shares. Right now, today, you're down with about 5 million shares. So it's pushing lower with volume. That would suggest to me that UPRO's next target to the downside golf guy would be 35.98. 35.98 is its oscillator and change line. 35.88 is the bottom of its monthly profile. So those are two areas that you're looking for UPROW to uh, close below uh, to uh, suggest that this wants to move lower. If we take a look at UPRO on a daily basis and consecutives move lower, this will become bar number four. This says... Uh, we have seen, as we take a look at this chart here, I've seen uh, a bar number seven. I've seen a bar number five once and a number of fours, twos, and threes out there. So you know what this is suggesting to you and I? This is suggesting that you should expect or anticipate some type of bounce or bottom to begin tomorrow out there. And that is in ticker symbol UPRO. And that's just based upon that consecutive dance move. What you really want to do is you really want to go back and take a look at the ES Mini and see what's going on there. And here we take a look at the ES Mini. The 30-minute chart does have a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. 
Price right now trading with inside its profile. The profile level goes from 4067 up to 4093. So watch both of those areas. Really to the downside, what you're watching is the low of the day at 4063.50. It requires a close below that to suggest that the market wants to continue to move lower. 10 minute to TD9 count. 120 minute roads momentum indicator signal, but needs a bullish reversal candle out there. So, and uh, no bottom signal on the uh, 60 minute time frame. So I'd watch the 30 out there. If price didn't close about 4093, that could be signaling to you that uh, you know some type of uh, rally has uh, has begun. Uh, but we do expect to see some type of uh, rally. This will be day number four in the ES to the downside as well. So expect to anticipate the potential for a two day rally that could begin tomorrow. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks, and uh, thank you to each of you for your requests out there. It always makes for me the show go nice and uh, easy. Uh, and uh, so we've gotten through all those requests, and that's a beautiful thing. If Peter's in the uh, den out there, uh, he would be asking, hey, where's the advanced client oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange? That'd be a great question because right now it is in the oversold territory. It is below the minus 150 level. Last time we were down here at that minus 150 area was when we saw a bottom that had uh, formed a couple-day bottom. 
That was back on April the 26th. We were talking about consecutive days lower out here. And although it doesn't guarantee a bottom, it most certainly is something to be taken a look at. So the general markets were back into the oversold uh, condition. That's going to have to work its well itself off. It can get more oversold, most certainly. Uh, will it get more oversold? Well, uh, let's take a look at uh, what's going on inside the NASDAQ 100 out there. Because we know that the NQ is still just consolidating with inside its uh, daily profile out there. Whoops, uh, shoot, that wasn't it. Give me a moment here the two properly change screens. That would be helpful, Stevie. There we go. So you should be seeing uh, Apple in the upper left-hand side. And uh, so here are the top eight holdings with inside the NDX 100. So if we take a look at Microsoft, what you can see up here is you can see wave number seven that has been uh, confirmed. But price is uh, trading with inside a new profile. Resistance 309, support 292, and price is trading above screen now center and change line. Its signal is uh, neutral. Amazon, it's trading with inside its daily profile. It's traded higher, trying to uh, test the resistance level. It has really the asset and change line. And uh, NVIDIA, it is trading with inside a new profile. It's got support at 265, resistance up at 279 out there. I don't see a top in place. Google, consolidates with inside its profile. Tesla, um, Tesla, what do we have out here? It looks like an A to B equals C to the downside that was confirmed with that bullish piercing candle. I'm not going to take the time right now because I have too few seconds left. Meta has a confirmed roadsman to indicator top with price consolidated with inside its profile. Um, so we're not seeing the breakdown at the top of the food chain inside the NDX 100 that we need to for a real flush to the downside. Folks, stay tuned for all the great program we've got lined up for you. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Fantastic Friday. Please have a terrific Thursday. Be safe out there. And we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon.